Dr. Giuliano, can you tell us what, what are some of the concerns in patients post-PCI awaiting cabbage? Well, I think the biggest concern we have is uh, premature discontinuation of thionylpyridine therapy. And that puts patients at risk uh, not only for acute thrombotic events, but also in the periop period, myocardial infarction, um, either before or after. So it's a, it's a big problem with all kinds of surgery, not even just bypass. So what, are, what was the objective of the BRIDGE study? Well, the BRIDGE study was trying to answer a question that uh, we really don't have a solution to at this time. So it, it fundamentally gets to a very important issue. And the objective of the BRIDGE study was really to assess the drug Cangrelor, which is an intravenous thionopyridine-like medication that does inhibit platelet function. And using this as a bridge to uh, treat patients with in the peri-procedural time period when we can take them off of their thionopyridine. Can you describe the main findings from the BRIDGE trial? Yes, it was a phase two study which really was designed to uh, look at the effect of Cangrelor on platelet reactivity. And really the primary objective was to take patients off of their thionylpyridine, administer Cangrelor in a randomized fashion compared to placebo, and measure platelet reactivity units. So the first portion of the study was really a dose ranging, uh, dose finding analysis. And once they established the dose that they were going to use, they then proceeded on with the feasibility and a bleeding safety assessment. So using a bridging strategy, did that lead to more bleeding at the time of surgery? Well, that's a good question. And that was the, the main safety component that they were analyzing. And uh, if I can just describe the design of the study a little bit, it might help you understand that uh, answer. Uh, patients were uh, taken off of their thionopyridine, and within three days, they were randomized to either placebo or an intravenous cangrelor infusion. Um, and then they were had surgery planned, bypass surgery, uh, anytime within the next two to seven days. Okay, uh, cangrelor was stopped uh, at. Uh, within one to six hours of their bypass surgery and the bleeding endpoints were assessed uh, associated with bypass so major cabbage related bleeding was looked at minor bleeding uh, in the perioperative period the results of the study demonstrated no significant difference in major cabbage related bleeding for patients on Cangrelor versus those on placebo However, there was uh, numerically higher numbers of bleeding events in the Kangalore group. Uh, this did not reach statistical significance, largely a part of the small size of the trial. Minor bleeding also was numerically higher in the Kangalore group, uh, again not achieving statistical si significance. Was there an easy explanation for the increased minor bleeding? Well, patients were uh, going serial uh, blood testing for platelet reactivity units. So there were multiple venous punctures that were occurring, um, and the minor bleeding tended to be at those sites. So what are some of the clinical implications from this trial? Well, I, I think what we've learned here is that it is feasible to administer Cangrelor, that it does what it was designed to do. It inhibits platelet reactivity units below what their cutoff value in the study was uh, at 240 PRUs. Uh, so the drug works in that capacity. It doesn't appear to have a significant impact on bleeding safety events at the time of bypass surgery. And now the next question, and really the most important question that we all have as interventionalists is, does it prevent perioperative thrombotic events, particularly acute stent thrombosis? So where do we go from here? Well, that's a difficult question, and, and it may be a very expensive question. Uh, to, these events are far and few between, and when you're talking very low percentage frequency events, uh, it will take tens of thousands of patients in randomized fashion to really show efficacy or prevention of these events compared to placebo. I'm not sure we're ever going to be able to go there, but this drug may provide uh, interventionalists with a level of comfort in patients who need to either undergo bypass surgery, who have freshly been stented, or even non-cabbage surgery, such as orthopedic or GI surgery. 
Um, and there, again, the need in the world of interventional cardiology to prevent these events at the time of surgeries is critical.